Here I am discussing the solutions for ICT questions from ESC 2020 GS paper. It starts from question number 2 in set D. Second question is the Ethernet designed by IEEE to compete with LAN protocols which can transmit data 10 times faster at a rate of 100 Mbps. We have seen what is Ethernet in your ICT classes but it is going little deeper about a particular type of Ethernet. By observing the options, we can eliminate some options. Like for example, in switch Ethernet, switching in networking means connecting between two different networks. Similarly, full duplex in communication means it is enabling two-way communication. So, anyway, Ethernet enables two-way communication. So, full duplex Ethernet does not have does not have an anything to enhance its capacity so it will be either fast ethernet or bridged ethernet again bridge is also related to networking which is a connecting point so applying elimination technique we can go with option a fast ethernet is one of the versions of the ethernet standard that enables 100 mbps data so earlier it was only 10 mbps so when fast ethernet came it came with 10 times its capacity so that was a major advancement at that time that is in 1995 that time it was a major advancement uh, so it came with a 10 times faster rate so that is the it is called as fast ethernet it is also called as 100 base x ethernet so Ethernet LAN is that uses switches to connect different host or segment is the switched Ethernet. So in this switching will give full duplex Ethernet. So the here the answer is A. Next question. I triple standard protocol which defines a wireless personal area network PAN operable in a room. So we have seen different I triple standards which defines Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Bluetooth. Li-Fi, etc. So here in question it uh, says that it is a personal area network. Personal area network is only for few meters that is also within the dimensions of a room. So from the options we can see that Wi-Fi it is not designed only for PAN it can be used for LAN also. So Wi-Fi is not an option. Bluetooth, Bluetooth is specially for PAN network because its range is less. Infrared, no, we have infrared. Wireless LAN also covering long distance. So here the option is B and it is a relatively easy question. Next question. Which one of the following points is a private switching station that connects the national internet service providers network and operates at a high data rate up to 600 Mbps. So this question is again from networking and it is giving the specifications and asking. This needs some knowledge in the networking topic. If we see different options, hub is given. We have seen hub. Hub is the device that we use in our home, office, etc. to connect to different ports. So hub point cannot be an option. Then modem, we know we use it to connect internet through telephone lines. So modem is not an option because it is dealing with connecting to internet service providers network it is at a higher level not at the home or office level so hub are usually to connect segments of LAN. modem is connect to internet that is using telephone lines so here the option is peering points it is known as internet exchange points there are physical infrastructure which allow network platforms and other ISPs to exchange traffic between the networks. So it is between the networking networks of ISPs to exchange connecting between different service providers network. So okay, we can eliminate two options and if you have an idea of networking you can answer this question that is answer B. Next question, which one of the following is the nodal department to implement public internet access program and rural internet connectivity by converting its offices as multi-service centers? So this question seems to be easy. 
But there is a trick in this question. You would have learned about public internet access program in the current affairs classes and e-governance articles. And you may tend to opt Department of Electronics and Information Technology because they are the nodal departments in many, many of the ICT programs. But here, this program, Public Internet Access Program, has two components. They are common service centers and post office. This aims to use common service centers as well as post offices, multi-service centers. So, common service centers we have seen that are the delivery points of the e-services in the villages. So, they are located in villages mainly managed by private parties providing e -service. Department of Electronics and Information Technology is the nodal department to coordinate these activities and implement the scheme. But the other component using post offices multi-service centers is coordinated by Department of Post. Department of Post is the nodal department to implement this scheme. Here post office themselves are converted to multi-service centers. Now when we are coming back to the question and read it carefully, we will know that it is the nodal department to implement public internet access program and rural internet connectivity by converting its offices. So here is the trick, its offices as multi-service centers. This option is not converting its offices, it is dealing with CSA. So the answer is D. Next question, which one of the following is not the visionary of Digital India as a program to transform India into digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. So this we have discussed in all articles and classes, what are the visionary of Digital India. There are three main visionaries of Digital India, digital infrastructure as core utility to every citizen, different schemes are undertaken and under that. Governance and services on demand that also have different services. Digital empowerment of citizens including digital literacy etc. So these are the three main vision areas. So which option is not coming under it? We will see this free Wi-Fi access. So this is an easy question. If you have read about digital India, you will not miss out this question. Infrastructure aspects provided by the government of India in formation of national e-governance plan for storage of data and hosting applications network connectivity and capacity building respectively are so here are three things storage of data and hosting of applications next in the network connectivity and capacity building so this is under national e-governance plan that is under digital india so they have three infrastructures so the question is to identify this infrastructures in the respective order so here the order is the matter so we have to carefully read this question also the order is we have to find the answer in the correct order but is the storage of data in among this which stands for st storage of data sdc stands for storage of data swan states stands for connectivity and nisj is for capacity building so answer a is in that order other things are not in that order so what is SDC? SDC is state data centers. So the name itself it is clear that it is for data and hosting. Then SWAN is state wide area network. So answer to connect state and UT headquarters up to block level by district and subdivisional headquarters. NASD is National Institute for Smart Government. It is a cooperation between Government of India and NASCOM to train people. So, it is about capacity building. Where there is skill development and training is there, it is about capacity building. So, if you don't know about NSD also, by knowing these two terms that we saw in Digital India, you can answer this question because no other option has SDZ and SWAN in, the, in this order. First and second. Next question. Which one of the following is not the characteristic of good governance and e-governance that are closely linked and depend on each other? We have seen that good governance and e-governance are closely linked because many aspects of the good governance can be supported by e-governance. If you adopt e-governance, many of the aspects are covered under it. So first we should know what are the characteristics of good governance. So there are eight main characteristics. There is rule of law, transparency, responsiveness, consensus oriented, 
equity and inclusiveness, effectiveness and efficiency, accountability, participation. So in all these aspects, ICT will be helpful. And among that, accountability is here, transparency is there, consensus oriented is there, but consciousness is not there. Consciousness is the order now. It does not have any relation with the governance. Other aspects of good governance. So we can opt this. Option C. C is the answer. Which one of the following is not the skill needed in the workplace of the future for inventive thinking using information and communication technology in education? So the question is especially about inventive thinking. What are the skills required? What are the skills required in our place for working in this aspect, inventive thinking, using information and communication technology? So, it is a difficult question unless you know what is inventive thinking and what are the skills required. These options are really confusing. Inventive thinking is about inventing innovative products and high-tech solutions. So, what? What, is, what does this term mean? It is about inventing innovative products. So, what are the skills required? Adaptability. Adaptability to manage complex independent world. Curiosity to know because it is knowledge based. Creativity. Ability to use your ability, capacity, ability to use your imagination to create new things. Risk taking, ability to take risk, unless you take risk, you won't invent anything. Here the order now is responsibility. So responsibility does not come as the skill in inventive thinking. So answer is B. Next question. The pedagogy which involves productive learning and finding new solutions to problems, where manipulation, existing information, and creation of real world products are possible with ICT. So here is again using ICT in education. Pedagogy deals with study of teaching, study of learning. Which type of pedagogy use manipulation of existing information for creation of real world, world products? So if you check with the ideas that we have, use of ICT in education, what is collaborative learning means? It is using ICT for interaction, interaction among students, teachers, expert, experts, etc. That is collaborative learning. So, in IC, ICT enables this by using various platforms. Creative, creativeness is using the existing information and creation of products and it involves the creative thinking of the mind rather than Rather than rote learning, we will using your creativity to understand and learn. Integrate, integrative learning. Integrative learning is, as the name indicates, it is integration of different branches. So, this approach eliminates the artificial separation between different disciplines. So, the class theory, practice, different subjects will come together. That is integration. Evaluative learning is it evaluates to the need of the student. So, student will direct their learning. So, the student is not a mere listener in this system. So, it will, it will, they will also involve using ICT. They will explore themselves and discover how the learning goes. So, from this most appropriate option is creative pedagogy that is option Next question is the statement question. Statement first says that information and communication technologies can facilitate improved service delivery and more efficient internal operations. Yes, this statement is correct. It can improve service delivery, right? By digitalization, transparency, etc. Fastness, etc. It can improve service delivery. So, internal operations also will become efficient because time taken will be less, duplication will be less and searching, arranging, all these activities will be very easy. Communication between different departments will also be very fast and effective. 
ICTs can create new opportunities for the marginalized and vulnerable of the society but do not represent a panacea for all development problems. So this is also correct because the people who do not have access to the traditional systems, traditional power systems, traditional authority systems, they can use the ICT and put for their talents. So we are seeing around many people now coming up as artisans, singing, dancing and showcasing their talents using ICT. They are able to assess information. So th this have revolutionized the opportunities for people who were marginalized before, who were not able to assess these things before. But ICT is not the one-stop solution for all development programs because ICT itself has a debate with with whom, who, uh, between whom, who has access to this ICT infrastructure and all and digital literacy. So there again involvement of government is required to bring up the gap. So it is not the ICT, we can't leave ICT like that will take care of all the development programs. So both statements are correct but the second statement does not explain the first statement logically. So answer is B. Next one is also a statement question. Statement first, long term sustainability of e-governance project does not depend on financial viability, especially if they are to be implemented in the public private partnership mode. So public play, private partnership mode itself, it is clear that the private parties are involved. When the private parties are involved in a public project, what is the incentive? It is nothing but money, right? So they want to earn some money by providing services. So this sentence does not make sense, does not depend on financial viability. If it is financially viable only, public-private partnerships are possible. If it is not financially viable, government has to give the viability gap funding, then only private parties will come. So the statement cannot be correct. Statement second, front-end e-services are possible without back-end computerization. So friend and e services means what the citizens will see in the friend and we can pay utility bills but the utility may not be computerized. So back end means what is the behind the screens we may not be seeing it. So this statement is correct because friend and e services are possible even without back end computerization we can see how. There was an example of friends, fast, label, instant, efficient network for disbursement of services by government of Kerala. But at the same time, the facilities to, to which they are paying, like the transmission coming, water authority, they are not at all computerized. So it means that front end services are possible even without back end computerization. But this model has some disadvantages that it is not a full-fledged e-services system. Once the integration is properly, the system will become more effective. But it is possible. So regarding PPP, regarding PPP, private partners provide specific IT infrastructure services and in return, public sector either pays for that service or they give grants or the private service partner will get revenue from the project. They will also collecting some fees. So if they work together and it has to sustain, it should be a long term relationship, it should be beneficial to also the private parties should be generating revenue. So statement first is false but statement second is true. The answer is D. There are 11 questions from the topic ICT in this exam and these questions are less technical compared to the last year exam. But they are not very easy. Is the e-governance, e-education, etc. That was ignored last year, has come into prominence this year. So this will give an idea of how the question will be next year. So you cannot leave out any topic. You have to learn both the technical aspect and also the general studies aspect in this topic. <laughs>